Hey everyone, this is Scott from the Scott Girl Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Rewatching a Series of Unfortunate Events. Today I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 6, uh, The Wide Window Part 2. So I just finished rewatching this episode, and this one I like a little bit more than the first part of it because we get a little bit more going on. The orphans got a little bit more to do with this one. At the beginning, they, you know, have to deal with the fact that they think they've lost another guardian again to count a loss villainous schemes and they seem to be left in the hands of him and Mr. Poe doesn't believe them again which is the most frustrating thing sometimes they like, get their children but come on Mr. Poe he even cites an example of when they were right last time and he still doesn't believe them because of one little one little mistake that they make with you know not comparing the handwriting which I thought was a little bit of a rookie mistake but they are children too like like they both the, the Mr. Poe frustrates me sometimes. Mr. Poe, you gotta believe them once in a while, but you know that would also not make the make the show very interesting at the same time. So I'm just frustrated with Mr. Poe. Uh, but yeah, this one the orphans get a lot more to do. They have to you know first escape from Mr. Poe and that with the help of Larry uh, the waiter. Thank you for that help in the comments for the last video. Um, but yeah, so they get help from him with the peppermint. Luckily, they didn't have like a real bad allergic reaction. You know, they had some highs and stuff, but something like a real allergy, you end up in the hospital. You need some adrenaline and stuff. So it's a good thing that it wasn't that severe, but I thought that was an interesting little way for them to get away. I don't remember if that's how it happened in the books or not. I don't think so. I feel like this one is one of those ones that was maybe a little bit more changed for, um, from the book because in a part of this, we also get their parents flying over the lake and that somehow them using binoculars bounces light off one thing and then they're able to start a fire and I'm like I'm I'm almost 100% sure that didn't happen in the book but I also don't know for sure but I'm fairly certain that didn't happen in the book but be sure to let me know in the comments below if it did or not um, but yeah then Andrew, they finally do figure out that Aunt Josephine's alive and they find her and you know she's still being a coward until you know they she mentioned until the um till Klaus mentions you know, the fact that realtors will show up in the place where she's hiding. Uh, and then she decides to get in the boat, even though she'd already eaten. And that was a, another part that I was like, wait, but you, you know better. You were preaching about this at the beginning. Why'd you get in the boat if, if you knew this was going to happen? I don't, like, I, I get that was part of the story, but at the same time, it's kind of just like, why'd you got to eat a banana? Why couldn't you wait? Why couldn't you mention it? I think you said I had, you had to wait 45 minutes. You were already waiting anyways. You could wait a little longer. Maybe you would have ca captured by Olaf anyways. I do think it's kind of weird that she let him push him off so easily, but I mean, whatever. You know, it's part, again, it's part of the story. Uh, but yeah, she does say something really, Aunt Josephine that says something kind of interesting at one point. She says, vastly frightening decision, a little VFD there. Only time I noticed it, so I was just like, I'm gonna write that down so I can mention it. And I did. That was that what that was for. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the stuff I liked in this. Uh, the parents, like I said, they were over. They're flying over top of the lake at some point, which I both liked and didn't because it seemed way too convenient, especially when they need to light the fire. Uh, but like I said, I always like to get these little clippets with the um, with the parents as we, you know, learn about their story more and more. Uh, but yeah, then we also get the we see the picture of. Uh, um, uh, you know, their parents and uh, Ike and Aunt Josephine and Olaf and we see a very young Lemony Snicket in there too at the very end uh, at the, and they're all at the smelly, or the lucky smells, not the smelly, the lucky smells and got those mixed up lumber mills which we, whereas we're, we see the orphans off to next for the next episode which I have to admit is one of those ones I always forget a lot about. I vaguely remember the, reading the book about that one uh, but I don't remember all the details, so I'm excited to get to rewatching that one. Uh, but yeah, what else do I have? Recoding the note. Oh, pasta puttanesca. That seems to just keep popping up, and I was just like, that's funny. And it just it's popped up a few times. Obviously, it was in the first uh, episode, the first or second episode with them cooking dinner. Uh, then it was mentioned, I think, last episode or the episode before that. Uh, Count Olaf mentions that he just finished some pasta puttanesca, and in this episode, we've got one of his. Uh, theater troupe listing off the ingredients to pasta boutonesque. So I'm just, I noticed that and I was like, I wonder why that keeps coming up. Is it just a funny joke? The little one line? It's gonna come up again? I can't remember, but I thought it was funny. Little thing. Uh, but yeah, that's all I had pretty much written for this episode. 
Uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed related to or got wrong, I should say, related to the books. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me today and have a good one.